All right, good morning, everybody. Batten down the hatches. Welcome to Lesson 49. We're talking about solving multi-step word problems. You don't know if you're going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide on these guys. And multi-step means you're going to have to do two or more different kinds of math. Are we ready? So the first thing, whenever we get to this lesson, I just want everybody to stop, take a deep breath, and please do not think you are going to figure out these problems as quickly as 143 times 6. This is an algorithm problem. These are serious thinking word problems. You are going to have to read the problem carefully. You're going to have to get a picture in your mind for each sentence. Maybe you're going to want to draw a picture here and there. You're going to have to do two things to be successful with these. Decide what the goal is, meaning what do you need to do to solve the problem? Decide what the first step should be to reach your goal. They are serious thinkers. You're really, really, really going to have to dig in. But we've been talking about this the whole year. What do you want? Learn how to fish or have somebody give you the fish, right? All right, let's get started on our first one here. And it says, Bob is five years older than Tommy. Tommy is three years younger than Susie. And it tells you Susie is 14 years old. And they want to know how old is Bob. Maybe you want to go ahead and draw yourself three little stick people. And maybe just write down the characters just to help you keep everything straight. And let's think about what the goal is on this problem. The goal is trying to figure out how old Bob is, right? So, figure out how old Bob is. What's going to be our first step? We got our stick people here. The really the only thing we know is that Susie is 14 years old, right? That's really the only solid age. Susie is 14 years old. We know that, so we can label her as 14. And if we want to know how old Bob is, well, Bob is five years older than Tommy, right? So really, the first step better be figure out how old Tommy is. That's going to have to be the first step. I ultimately want to know how old Bob is, but before I do that, I better figure out how old Tommy is. What do we know about this Tommy person? Three years younger than Susie. So, if Susie's 14 and Tommy's three years younger, how old is Tommy going to be? Three years younger than 14, wouldn't that make this guy 11 years old? So once I figure out how old Tommy is, because that was the first step, let's go and figure out Bob. Bob, they're saying, is five years older than Tommy. Well, we just figured out my first step that Tommy's 11. So Bob's five years older than him. What's five years older than 11? Bob would be 16. You're going to have to break it down step by step and think. And again, you are not going to figure these out as quickly as 143 times 6. This is serious, serious reading problems.
Okay, let's take a look at our next one if we're ready for it. George earns $10 for every hour he works. There's our period. Let's get that picture in our mind. $10 for every hour he works. But here's something else. If he works more than eight hours a day, he makes $15 for each additional hour. After he puts in his regular eight hours, if he's working any overtime, he's now getting time and a half, which is $15. Yesterday, George worked for 13 hours. What was his income for the day? So let's think about what our goal is. Our goal is going to be how much money does George make in a day? But the first step, I would say, is figure out how much overtime pay he got. That would have to be the first step because he's getting overtime. He gets $15 an hour for every hour over eight hours. So that day he worked 13 hours. Anything more than eight, he gets overtime for. So how many overtime hours did he work? Well, 13 minus eight, he'd have to have worked five hours of overtime, right? How much money does he get for five hours of overtime? He gets $15 an hour when he works OT, overtime, right? So $15 times five hours of overtime. Five times five is 25. Write down your five, carry your two. Five times one is five plus two more. Hey, that's 75. He gets paid $75 just for those five hours of overtime. But let's figure out his regular rate now. Eight hours a day, he makes $10, right? We got to remember his regular eight hours. So wasn't that 80 hours he got for the first eight hours? He gets $75 for his overtime. He gets another 80, eight times 10. And all we have to do now is add these two up, right? $75 plus 80 regular pay dollars, that's going to give you $155, right? Not bad for a day's work, but 13-hour days are pretty long. I haven't worked a 13-hour day for almost two weeks now. Check out this one. Carrie studied for twice as long as Lynn. Alex studied for 15 minutes more than Carrie. Lynn studied for 30 minutes. Which expression can be used to find the number of minutes Alex studied? And here's one little hint. Sometimes it helps to read the information backwards, last to first. So, which expression can be used to find the number of minutes Alex studied? We know that Lynn studied for 30 minutes, right? So, while we're trying to do this, she studied for 30 minutes. Let's put a little L up on each one. We got a 30 in each one of these expressions. This is what they're saying. Lynn studied for 30 minutes. So, this must be the Lynn they're talking about, right? And let's go to the second sentence. Alex studied for 15 minutes more than Carrie. Alex studied for 15 minutes more. When you're doing 15 more, are you adding or subtracting? I think you're adding. So this 15, that's got to be Alex. Let's look at this. So I don't think it could be these two 
that have minus 15. I'm just going to cross these guys out right now. Can't be because Alex studied for 15 minutes more. There's your clue word that we are talking plus. So 15 is Alex here. It's got to be either C or it's got to be D. Let's take a look at our last sentence if we're reading them backwards. Carrie studied for twice as long as Lynn. Carrie studied for twice as long as Lynn. We got done saying Lynn is the 30 in that expression. So if we're talking about somebody who studied for twice as long, are you timesing or dividing if you're doing it twice as long? There's your key word right there. When you're doing something twice as long, aren't you multiplying it by two? There is carry is got to be the two. So are we dividing by two or are we timesing by two if we're talking that she studied for twice as long? We are definitely talking times, and by two, it has got to be expression D. Check out this one. Here it's telling us, the bus carried 60 students. We all see that picture in our mind. We all know what a school bus looks for. It's got to be a big bus if it's holding 60 kids. The 23 students from room 10 and the 27 students from room eight got on the bus. You got that picture in your mind. Now they're asking us, how many more students can get on the bus? So ultimately, our goal is to find out how many more students can fit on the bus. But the first step is going to be find the total number of students on the bus already. And here's a hint. Not every number is always used to find the answer in a story problem. Kids who don't like to read are going to just look for numbers and then go, so oh, there's 60, there's 23, there's 10, there's 27, there's 8. Guess what? They are purposefully messing with you to make sure you are reading and picturing. Because take a look. If we read this carefully, 23 students, but let's look from room 10. Does this 10 have anything to do with the number of kids on the bus? No. That would be like 23 students from Miss Hofer's room or 23 students from Mr. Hines's room. It's just the name of a room. It has nothing to do with kids on a bus. 27 students from room 8. Same thing. This room 8, they just threw it in there to make sure you're getting a good picture in your mind. Here's what we really have to worry about. 23 kids got on the bus and 27 more students got on the bus. How many total students have gotten on the bus so far? Well, what's 23 plus 27? You have 50 kids on that bus so far. So if my goal is to figure out how many more students can fit. Well, you got 50 on the bus. You can fit 60 students on there. How many more students can get on the bus? It's pretty easy now. It's 10. The math is not difficult. It's the reading and the thinking and keeping pictures in your mind. Check out this one. Here it's saying, Mary collected 73 box tops for school. Her brother collected 27. 
they decided to divide the box tops evenly and made two equal piles. How many box tops were in each pile? So your ultimate goal is to figure out how many box tops each kid gets if they divided them evenly and made two equal piles. That's our ultimate goal, right? How many box tops did each kid get? How many kids are we talking about? Do you have that part down yet? Looks like we have Mary, and it looks like we have her brother, right? Do you have that picture in your mind? Two piles of box tops. So what's going to be the first step? You better figure out the total number of box tops, right? Not too tough if I'm doing, I'm sure everyone's thinking, oh yeah, Mr. Enns, that makes sense. And it does make sense, but you have to really focus and concentrate. So the total number of box tops, Mary brought 73, her brother brought 27. So what is 73 plus 27 more? You have a hundred box tops so far. And they took that hundred box tops and they made two equal piles. Well, if you're starting with a hundred and putting them in two equal piles, what are we doing? I sure hope you figured it out so far. We're dividing by two, right? What would be 100 divided by two? It's gonna give you 50 box tops in each pile, right? You're going to have 50 in this pile, and you're going to have another 50 over here in this pile. It all makes sense to you now, I'm sure, but I've seen enough fifth graders that they get frustrated when they have to read each sentence carefully and make the picture in their mind. And that is the end. You are so going to want some scratch paper and pencil. Go slow. Go careful. And please do not think you're only going to read each problem one time and get an answer. Good luck.